All right, horizontal launch number one. Uh, got a marble, it's similar to the example that I did for you in the notes, right? Um, no friction, so don't have to worry about that. Uh, sketch a motion map showing the motion of the marble after it leaves the rail using the grid to help you carefully locate the marble's positions. So what we need to know to be able to sketch this map is that the horizontal motion in the horizontal direction, I've got constant velocity, and in the vertical direction, I have constant acceleration. Um, so that means that in the horizontal direction, that the ball is going to go the same amount of grid for every little tick of time. So I'll start with it here for my motion map, and uh, I'll go, let's say, every three. It's your decision how you do this. And you know what? I meant to make this dot right here. That's just like kind of lighter, like just a mark to show where that horizontal coordinate is going to be on this grid. And then in the vertical direction, it's going to start here, right? And then it's going to go like a little bit, and then it's going to go like a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. So these, because it's accelerating in the down direction, um, that's, uh, these are going to space out more and more as time goes by. So the first tick if you look, it's going to be uh, here. So this is like, maybe I should number these to make sure I know what goes with what. Uh, this is like the zero with one. So this is one, two, three, four. So here, it's gone over this far and at that first tick of time down that much. So this is like plotting a point, right? By the time we get to the second tick of time, I'm here horizontally and here vertically. And by the third tick of time, I'm here horizontally and here vertically. And by that fourth tick of time, I'm here horizontally and here vertically. So you can see that that makes that like parabolic arc down like this. And we want to show horizontal and vertical velocity vectors. Well, the horizontal ones go halfway to the next horizontal. right, halfway to the next one. And then the vertical ones also go halfway to the next one. So a tiny little arrow there. I'm going halfway to here, halfway to there, halfway to there. And those should be getting bigger. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, sketch and label force diagrams for the marble, both when it's on the rail. So on the rail, uh, this is just like the bowling ball going through a no touch zone. I've got force of gravity, and I've got a normal force. Uh, there's no force of motion or something. There's, uh, if the forces on this are balanced like this, then it just can, rolls at a constant velocity, right? Forces are balanced can be at rest or constant velocity. There does not need to be a forward force for it to move forward. So ain't nothing there. Um, and then when it's off the rail, then there's no more support force just the force of gravity. That's all. And that's kind of the definition of what free fall or what projectile motion is when something's only under the influence of gravity. Um, describe the horizontal and vertical motion of the ball in each case. So here, horizontal is constant velocity, and vertical, uh, there's no motion when it's up on the table no vertical motion. And then when it's off the table in the horizontal direction, I still have constant velocity, the same constant velocity, because nothing's changed in the horizontal direction, right? There's no forces, and there's still no forces. In the vertical direction, I now have constant acceleration, where the acceleration is negative 10. Once the ball leaves the table, calculate how long it will take for the ball to hit the floor. Um, so that's going to come from setting up the vertical part. And this is going to come from setting up the horizontal part. So in a lot of problems, I like to set these two things up, the vertical and the horizontal, next to each other. Um, but here, since it's split up this way, I'll do that horizontal down here. 
Uh, so once the ball leaves, let's see what, what we got here. I got acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. Get that for free because uh, it's free fall in the vertical direction. And the initial velocity, is it 10? No. This is horizontal. This is the Vx. How much velocity does it have in the up-down direction? None. So this is zero. When you have a horizontal launch problem, your initial velocity in the vertical direction is going to be zero, and your Vx is going to be um, whatever the launch speed is every time. So don't be putting the 10 there. I know it's tempting. What's the final velocity? I don't know. I don't think I care really either about that. And then uh, what's the delta y? Well, this marble is going to go from here to here. And that's 1.5 meters, but it's going from here to here. That is in the down direction. have to get in the habit of double-checking, second-guessing yourself about the sign of that. Um, and then time is what I want to find. So which equation is that? Look at my kinematics equations and write down that equation. Then I'm going to plug the numbers in. So negative 1.5, 1 half times negative 10, negative 5 t squared, and the vi is 0, so that cancels out. So my calculator, I'm to find the square root. 1.55. That's about 0.55 seconds. In the horizontal direction, I have constant velocity. So the only variables that I have are the constant velocity, delta x, and time. And I just found the time there. And I know that the horizontal velocity is 10. So, only one equation here, delta x is equal to my constant horizontal velocity times time. Five point five meters. All right, suppose the table was doubled in height to three meters. Determine the horizontal range of the marble as it falls to the floor. So uh, if it's three meters, what's um, different here? Well, when I set up this, the acceleration would still be negative 10. The initial velocity in the vertical direction would still be zero. Uh, final velocity, I still don't know and don't care about that. At the delta y would be now negative 3 instead of negative 1.5. Um, so I would do the same thing here, and that's going to turn into negative 3 as equal to negative 5 t squared instead of negative 1.5. And then I'm going to do that on my calculator. And that's about 0.77. And uh, what effect does doubling the height have on the range? Uh, sorry, determine the range, so multiply that by 10 now. Because in the horizontal direction, I still have my 10 meters per second. And now I know my time is 0.77. So my delta x is 7.7 .7 meters. So um, what effect did that have? Um, there's different ways. I mean, it increased it, obviously. You make the table higher, it's going to go a little further. Um, what, in fact, happened, if you think about the math here, when we doubled this, we did have to take the square root of that. So doubling the time had the effect of increasing the distance by the square root of 2. Um, so that's the fanciest answer you could give to that. If you take this right here, this 5.5, .5, 
and you multiply it by the square root of 2. Why doesn't doubling the height double the distance? Because when you double the height right here, you end up taking the square root of it. So doubling it only increases it by the square root of 2. And there you go. That's our 7.7. Um, all right. And that's that one. Oops. Sorry about that. Number two, uh, two and three, really same problem, both about this situation here. Now, as this marble goes through here, it's going to be going at a constant velocity through these photo gates, which are basically just going to like start a timer and then stop a timer when it rolls through these. Um, so uh, these are 30 centimeters apart which is 0.3 meters, and it goes through them in 0.2 seconds. And it's going at a constant velocity. So with a constant velocity, your velocity is just distance over time. Right? So how fast is this thing going? Its velocity here is 0.3 meters divided by 0.2 seconds, which is 1.5 meters per second. So that's the first thing you have to recognize here, is that those two numbers are going to get you that launch velocity. If you didn't get that, if you didn't figure that out, then um, you should pause this video right now and try to finish the problem uh, now that you have the launch, the horizontal launch velocity. Um, where would a coin be placed on the ground? So this rolls off here. And so in other words, what we're looking for is what is the delta x? Not to be confused with this. We're done with these now, right? This is the delta x where it lands on the floor. So I'm going to set up my vertical. And my horizontal variables. Remember, time is the thing that they have in common. OK, what do I know? This is a horizontal launch problem. So this is all horizontal. So it all goes here, and none of it goes here. Eventually, when we start to do launches at an angle, then we're going to have to use sine and cosine to break it up into the two parts. And this part will go here and this part will go here, right? But for now, we just have the horizontal launch, so all of it goes for horizontal and none of it goes for vertical. Putting that zero here is so important. That's like the number one mistake that I see. Um, what's the delta Y? 92 centimeters, got to change that to meters. And you got to recognize that it's going down, right? From here, 92 centimeters lower to there. And Uh, now I'm going to use my delta y equals one half a t squared plus v i t. V i is zero again. So do that on my calculator. It's about point four three meters. Uh, the lab benches in my classroom here, that's I'm actually standing at one of those right now, are in fact about 92 centimeters above the floor. So that's about how long it takes for something rolling off one of my lab benches to get to the floor. And then uh, for this here in the, in the horizontal direction, there's only one equation, delta x is equal to vx times time. The Vx, the horizontal velocity, is 1.5 times 0.43. That's about 0.65 meters or 65 centimeters. 
either one of those is fine. Since this was given in centimeters, probably the person, if they're actually going to try to put a coin here and really have it land on it, um, they're going to want to know in centimeters because they're going to have a um, meter stick that's marked out in centimeters. All right. Um, suppose now that the same ball released from the same ramp um, struck a coin on the floor. That's uh, This should say the same table, sorry. That's maybe confusing. But it's anyway, same situation here. Uh, struck a coin on the floor that's placed 25 centimeters. Uh, what was the ball's horizontal velocity, and how long did it take for it to pass through those same photo gates? Um, all right, let's see if we can figure that out. Um, so now we're kind of working backwards here. Uh, 25 centimeters. Um, when it rolls off here, all of this information is still the same. So the time is the same, which is, who put that M there? That's seconds. Jeez. Sorry about that. So the time is still 0.43 seconds. That has not changed. It doesn't matter how fast it rolls off this. Because the vertical velocity is zero, regardless of what the horizontal is, it's going to take the same amount of time to get to the floor. Um, so uh, that time is 0.43 seconds. And the delta x is 0.25 meters. Then what's the Vx? Well, there's only one equation for the horizontal side. Delta x is Vx times t. So I'm going to divide. That's 0.58. So that's the answer for A. What was the ball's horizontal velocity? And then part B, how long did it take for the ball to pass through the photo gates? So that's coming back up to this little calculation I did. So the photo gates are the same distance apart. The photo gates are still a delta x of 0 0.30 meters apart. But now I've got a new vx, which is 0.58 meters per second. So what's the time associated with this? Uh, same equation. If you're wondering, wait a minute, I thought delta x was 0.25. This is different. That's the delta x from the edge of the floor to uh, from the edge of the table to where it lands on the floor. Now we're back up here, so I'm just resetting things. But it's still constant velocity, so I can still use that same equation with the new delta x and find this new time. So that's 0 0.3 equals 0 0.58 times time. And that gives me 0.52 seconds. Now it's going slower, so that should be more time than what it was initially. Um, yes, which is true. So this took about half a second to roll through the photo gates, and this one took only about a fifth of a second. All right, that's uh, horizontal launch number one.